Hi, and welcome to 8.3 Multi-Step Trigonometry. Uh, to start with, I have just a little bit of a uh, warm-up. So a couple of questions just to review the skills that we're going to need to use uh, quite well in order, to, um, in order to do the next step here. So if you're stuck with these three warm-up questions, um, go back to 8.1 and 8.2 or give me a shout and we can go over them so that you feel much more comfortable with them before you go on to these multi-step ones. Um, you can ignore the numbers. I, I cut and paste these out of a worksheet um, just so they look exactly like the ones that you guys are going to be doing in practice. Um, so warm up. This question is question number one. Um, there's no question here, sorry, that was on the worksheet, but uh, we can talk about it. This one's going to be uh, find the length of this missing side x. Um, so we are given a side and an angle. Um, I always recommend, if you don't need to write it down, that's fine, um, but that we in fact label all the sides of the triangle. So x is my hypotenuse in this case. 19 is all the way across. It's the opposite. And the one right beside, uh, adjacent by the way, means beside. Um, that is our adjacent. Um, if you haven't yet already, it's also worth probably scribbling at the top of your page uh, sine of an angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cos of an angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan of an angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Um, so back to question one, which one of these trigonometric ratios am I going to choose to use? Well, I'm trying to find my hypotenuse, which means I'm probably going to use sine or cos, and I know the opposite side, so the one with opposite and hypotenuse is sine. So I'm going to write down that equation. The sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse. Then I'm going to substitute my known values in. The sine of 23 is equal to opposite 19 over my hypotenuse, which is x. X is on the denominator, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of algebra. The first thing I want to do if X is on the denominator is I want to make it not on the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by X. On my right-hand side, that cancels, and on my left-hand side, I'm left with X sine 23, and that's going to be equal to 19. Sine 23 is just a number. You can plug it into your calculator if you'd like, and it'll tell you what that number is. It's just going to be a decimal, so we can treat it exactly like a number. I'm going to divide both sides by sine 23, and I get x is equal to 19 divided by sine 23. I'm going to pull out my calculator, and I am going to type into my calculator 19 divided by the sine of Oh, it didn't work. Sign of 23, close that bracket. Oh, that didn't work too. Um, what happens if I do that? There we go. Sign of 23, and that's going to be equal to 48.6. 48.6. Um, there are no units, so that's uh, that's our final answer. If there are units, we should include the units. So if 19 was given to us in something like uh, centimeters, then our final answer would also be in centimeters. Whatever units are given are the units that you'd use. Um, question number four, we've got this little uh, question mark right by that angle there. So we're wondering what is the measure of that angle? Um, and you'll notice how in this question I'm given all three sides, um, which will come up in just a second. But you should notice that as soon as you're looking at this question. Uh, the first thing we're going to have to do, just like we do every other time, is we're going to label the sides. Um, this is my hypotenuse. 24 is on the opposite side, and adjacent means right beside this 7 is adjacent. So when I go to choose now which primary trigonometric ratio I'm going to use, sine, cos, or tan, to find my angle... I'll notice that I've given all three sides. 
sometimes this will cause people to panic and be like, I don't know what to do next. I've never had this happen. And in reality, it doesn't matter. You can choose any one of them you want. I could choose, for example, the tan of my unknown angle. I don't like that it's a question mark, but I'll deal with it. Tan is opposite over adjacent. I should write down my whole equation before I do anything to it, just to be consistent. So tan of question mark opposite is 24, and my adjacent is 7. I could also choose to use, if I wanted to, the sine opposite over hypotenuse, and the sine of that angle would equal opposite 24 over hypotenuse 25. Or I could use the cos of the angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So the cos of that question mark is going to be equal to my adjacent, which is 7, over my hypotenuse, which is 25. And well, look what happens when I plug these into my calculator. Can I move my calculator so we can see all three? Um, I know that first one's tan, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it where it is. I'm going to clear my calculator, and I'm going to type in, um, to keep in mind, to get rid of a tan, I'm going to take the inverse tan of both sides. So I'm going to do shift inverse tan of 24 divided by 7. Close my bracket. And I get that my calculator tells me that the missing angle is 73.7 degrees. Degrees. If I had chosen to use sine, I'm going to clear this, I'm going to start again, then I would have gone shift sine of 24 divided by, divided by 25, close my bracket, and that's going to be equal to, oh no, we've got a mistake. I think I hit the wrong button. Uh, let's clear that and let's just try again. The shift of sine, the inverse sine is 24 divided by 25. And I get, yes, a 73.7 as well. So the question mark value sine would also be 73.7. Um, that mistake I made, you shouldn't be able to be, make on your calculator. has to do with these three buttons down here, which most people won't have. I pressed one of those by accident. Um, and the last one, if I did the inverse cos of 7 over 25, I also should end up with, you guessed it, 73.7. You don't have to do all three of these. You only need to do one of them. I just wanted to show you that if you know all three sides, any approach is fine. You will always get to the same answer. Let's look at question eight. Question eight, we are looking for, again, the question mark, the missing angle. If I label things, I know that this is my hypotenuse, this is my opposite side, and the 16 is right beside, and right beside is adjacent. Those two words are synonyms. If you want to say right beside in a fancy way, you just say adjacent. Um, I have the hypotenuse and the adjacent. I only know those two sides, so I need to choose the trigonometric ratio that has adjacent and hypotenuse. In this case, it's going to be cos. So the cos of an unknown angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, or even if it's a known angle, it still is. So my cos of the unknown angle is going to be equal to 16 over 17. If I want to find out what this is, I'm going to take the inverse cos of both sides. On the left-hand side, it cancels, and I'm left with my unknown angle is equal to the inverse cos of 16 divided by 17. And I get that it is 19.7 degrees. So again, quick little refresher. Question, the first one we did, which I've got as question one, was how to find a side. The second one we did, question four, is how to find an angle. And you can find it given any number of ways if you're given all three sides. And question number eight 
is how to find an unknown angle if you're only given a couple of sides. If you're only given a couple of sides, you're going to have to be choosy about which primary trig trigonometric ratio you choose. Um, if you're given all three sides, you could do any of them. Uh, but technically, this one, question number four, should be easier because you've got any options, but I find that some people get confused by the options. Um, so let's look at some multi-step trigonometry problems. So again, there's no real question here, but they're pretty consistent. Uh, find the length of the missing side. Uh, maybe I should write this down so that people who are reading them without watching the movies um, can figure it out. Find the length of the missing side. Cool. Um, and it's been depicted with an X, and I, maybe I want to draw that with uh, red. So we will notice here that we have two right angle triangles. So I've got one which I'm going to show in green, which is this one here. This is a right angle triangle. And one I will do, and let's do purple, this right angle triangle. And you'll notice how they share a side, which is this blue dotted line here. So I have a green triangle and a pink or purple triangle, and they share a side, which is the blue dotted line. This is going to become quite important. I might get rid of these lines just so it's a bit clearer and we can talk about it a bit. Um, so I will notice that if I want to find this length x, I could look at this triangle on the right-hand side. Uh, maybe I'll go back to my original, I can't remember. We'll call this one green and we'll call this one purple. Um, so on the green triangle, if I wanted to, tr if I tried to solve this right away, I would say, okay, so I am looking for the hypotenuse and I know this angle, so this is the opposite side and this is the adjacent side, uh, but I don't know what any of those are. I'm just going to go back and do those in green. This is my hypotenuse. This is my opposite. This is my adjacent. And I missed green. Apparently, I got gray. Um, so I don't know enough things. If I tried to plug, I couldn't choose a formula because I don't know what they are. But I, I noticed that this adjacent side of my triangle is shared with that purple triangle. So the question is, can I use this purple triangle to find what I've labeled as that gray A? And the answer is yes. So if I look at from this purple angle of 65 degrees, and I go about labeling things, uh, this side is beside it and not a hypotenuse, so this is adjacent. And this is opposite of that 65 degrees. This long side over there is the hypotenuse, but we don't care about the hypotenuse because we don't know what it is and the question doesn't ask about it. But if I choose my adjacent and opposite, I believe adjacent and opposite is tan. My tan of an unknown angle is opposite over adjacent. So my tan of 65 degrees is going to be opposite over adjacent, which is 31. If I multiply both sides by 31, I really don't like using O as a variable, so I might um, change it a little bit. Um, I don't know how to get rid of that guy. Maybe just go like that. Um, now nah, I'll just leave it as O for right now so it's consistent for us. Um, I could plug those into my calculator. 31 times tan 65. 31 times the tan of 60. Oh, I missed. Let's hit a delete tan of 65. Close my bracket. And that's equal to 66.479. I'm going to keep some decimals throughout this whole thing because if I don't and I keep rounding on all of the middle steps, all of that rounding will add up and at the end I could end up very far away from a final answer. And I'll show you a calculator trick you can use to uh, help yourself not get very far away from a final answer. I'm going to write down 66.47, 66.48. So my opposite is equal to 66.4. Eight. So my opposite here is also my, notice how this blue dotted line is the same as my adjacent side. 
So if I look at my gray now, I know things about my adjacent. I know that's 66.48, and I'm looking for my hypotenuse, and I believe that that formula is the cos of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So now I can substitute in the values that I know. The cos of 41 is equal to my adjacent side, which is 66.48. And I'm going to put ellipses here because that just means that even though I haven't written down all of the decimals, I'm going to use all of the decimals, and I'll show you how in your calculator in a second, divided by my unknown x. I'm going to divide, uh, multiply both sides by x. So I get x cos 41 on my left, and on my right it cancels. And I'm going to divide both sides by cos 41, divide by cos 41. That looks a little bit messy, but it does work. My x is equal to 66.48 divided by cos 41. So I'm going to go back to my calculator, and I've got this 66.4, uh, 66.47971455. And I don't want to have to write down all of those decimals every time. But I have down in the bottom, and every calculator will have one. Sometimes you'll have to hit shift to get it. But in this case, in this calculator, I don't have to. And it's answer. So on my next line, I can hit this button, answer. And what it'll do, it just says ANS and some calculators, it'll say the number. It'll take the answer from whatever previous calculation I did and then divide by cos 41. And what that does is it uses all of the decimals. So even though I didn't write them down, it does use every single one of them. 88.08, uh, 88.08. And I like just a one decimal point, so an 88.1. Again, there are no units, so that's the final answer. Let's take a look at the second one. Again, we are looking for x. I'm going to call the triangle on the right a purple triangle this time. I'm kind of liking using gray, so I'm going to try gray. I'm going to give this blue dotted line a variable because I don't like using O or A. Um, H is okay. Well, I really just don't like using O. And what I'm going to do is give it the variable if that's X. Let's call this one Y. It's not a very good Y. Maybe I'll zoom in and try again. That's a bit of a nicer Y. Y. So now I have these two variables, X and Y. Again, if I look at the pink triangle on the right, I don't know enough information about it yet to find out what the length of that side is. So I'm going to look at my gray triangle first. My gray triangle, I know an angle and a side. If you ever know two pieces of information about a right angle triangle, you can find out everything else. That's all you need. Two pieces of information. So this gray triangle, I know an angle and a side. I can find out everything else, as long as it's a right angle triangle. So on the gray, I can label my sides again. Y in this case is the adjacent. It's right beside this 34 degree angle, and six is the hypotenuse. Uh, adjacent over hypotenuse is going to be a cos. Cos of an angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So in this case, the cos of 34 is equal to adjacent, which is y, over hypotenuse, which is 6. Multiply both sides by 6, and I get that y is equal to 6 cos 34. Go ahead and plug that into my calculator. 6 times cos 34 and I get 4.97. Y is equal to 4.97, and I'm gonna use this same trick again, so I'm gonna put the ellipses indicating that I'm gonna use all of those decimals. Now that I know why, I can look at my purple triangle. I've got a 45 degree angle, and I know the side, so this is adjacent to my 45 degree angle, and x is the hypotenuse, so adjacent and hypotenuse we just talked about, and it's written down is up here is cos, so the 
cos of 45 is equal to my adjacent, which I know is 4.97, plus all those decimals, divided by x. Multiply both sides by x to get it off the denominator of a fraction. Divide both sides by cos 45, and I end up with both sides by cos 45. Very naughty habit. Left-hand side, it cancels. x is equal to 4.97 stuff divided by cos 45, and if I plug that into my calculator, so again, I'm going to hit that answer button, and then I'm going to divide by cos 45, close my bracket, that's equal to 7.03. Done, and that is my final answer. I think I have one more for you. A big mama jama. So, um, there's a couple of things. The textbook labels triangles a little bit differently than the worksheet does, so I've tried to do that here. Um, and I think what I would like to find is find the length of side AB. So I like this way a little bit better than the way the worksheets do, where they would put a variable there. And I can do that now if I want to. Length of AB. So AB is how I name a, a line segment. So AB is this red one here, and I could call it X if I wanted to. But labeling all of the corners gives us an ability to talk about all the triangles. So I have a triangle ABE. A, B, E, and that's a triangle. I also have a triangle, and this is a right angle triangle. There's our right angle right there. I also have a triangle BED. B, E, D, and that makes a right angle triangle, and my right angle is down there. And I also have a triangle BDC. B, D, C. And that is my triangle. And if I wanted to write those down, I could talk about them. I could talk about triangle uh, A, E. That's a B up top, I think, isn't it? A, E, B. I could talk about triangle B, E, D. Or I could talk about triangle B, D, C. All three of those things. Um, notice how I could call them different names and they would be the same triangle. For triangle A, E, B, I could also call it triangle B, A, E. Those are the same things. It references the exact same points in the exact same triangles. I forgot to throw my right angle triangle into that green one. There you go. That's our right angle right there. Okay, so we're looking for length of side A, B. We'll notice that I know an angle in that triangle, but that's it. So I don't know enough about that triangle to do anything in my red triangle. However, in my blue triangle, B, E, D, shares a side. So I'm going to look for that shared side. And okay, so if I look at triangle B, E, D, I also still only know one thing. And so I don't know enough about that triangle to solve it either. So, but then I notice my blue triangle also has a shared side with my green triangle. And so I look at this green triangle and I go, okay, this green triangle, triangle B, D, C, I know two things so I can find everything else. So I'm going to give these shared sides some variables. This is just like word problems. They're going to be intermediate variables um, that I'm going to use up before the end, and I'm going to make them in red. Um, I might as well use an X, and then a Y, and then a Z. So now I know what sides I'm talking about. So I've got an X, Y, Z. Actually, I take that back. I am going to... No, I like that. Yeah, we're going to call those variables. So I want to find the length of side Z. 
So I have to start with my green triangle, just like we talked about, and I have to label my sides. This long side opposite the right angle triangle will always be the hypotenuse. So 14 in this case is the hypotenuse. And side Z is the one right next to the angle. It must be adjacent. So I have to think about which primary trigonometric ratio uses adjacent and hypotenuse, and it's cos. So the cos of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. I know the angle is 23 degrees. I'm going to have to keep scrolling up and down here. Sorry for that so that I can look at things. My adjacent, I don't know, but that is side Z divided by my hypotenuse, which is 14. If I multiply both sides by 14 on my right-hand side, it cancels, and I'm left with Z is equal to 14 cos 23. So Z is equal to, get my handy-dandy calculator out again, 14 times cos 23, close my bracket, that's equal to 12.887. And again, I'm going to carry all those decimals. Once I know Z, I can look at my blue triangle. I know Z, and I know 12. So there's two ways you could do this. You could say, well, I need to find side Y, and I don't know how to do that without an angle, because that's what we've been doing. Or we could go back to Pythagorean theorem, which I think is the fastest way to do this. Z is the hypotenuse, so that's going to be C. And then it doesn't matter what other side I call A and what side I call B, because we're going to use A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. I'm going to substitute my values in. My 12 squared plus Y squared is equal to 12.88 squared. So I'm going to leave things as they are because this 12.88 squared, if I plug it into my calculator now, is going to get quite nasty. And I'm just going to do a little bit of manipulation before I put it into my calculator. What I want to do is I want to isolate my unknown. My unknown is y. In order to isolate my unknown y, I'm going to have to do something to both sides. And in this case, I'm going to subtract my 12 squared from both sides. And I have a y squared is equal to 12.88 squared minus 12 squared. And then I would take the square root of both sides to get rid of the squared. So I get y is equal to the square root of 12.88 squared minus 12 squared. And I can do this all in one step in my calculator. So I'm going to clear everything so that we start fresh. I'm going to start with my square root, and that opens up my bracket, which is good. And I want the... Oh, no. Hold on. Let's see if I, I messed things up when I cleared it. My answer is 12.88, which is what we want. Okay. So I want the square root of my answer squared minus 12 squared. And then I want to close that bracket after all of that. And that's going to be equal to 4.69. So why is equal to 4.69 stuff. And then I'm going to go back, and now I can look at my red triangle finally. So this is a three-step process. I know why, and I know an angle. So in the red triangle, I have to go through, and i got to label it again. Y is my hypotenuse in this case, and X is adjacent in this case. I'm labeling them a little bit faster every time. Um, just because you guys should be getting a bit more comfortable with it every time. Um, again, you don't have to write it down on your diagrams if you don't want to. If you're super comfortable with it and getting super fast, um, as most people will with practice, then that's awesome. Adjacent and hypotenuse is a cos again. So my cos of an angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. I know that my angle is 52 degrees, so my cos of 52 is equal to my adjacent side which is an x divided by my hypotenuse, which is 4.69. Multiply both sides by 4.69 stuff. Multiply this side by 
0.69. Sorry, I've got an extra decimal in there. And then it erases the whole thing. <clears throat> so x is equal to 4.69 stuff times cos 52. x is equal to 4.69. So this is answer times cos 52 is equal to 2.89. And that is my final answer. So again, if you're struggling with any one of these steps, you're going to be in trouble. So make sure you spend enough time on 8.1 and 8.2 that the individual steps feel okay, and then we can start looking at multi-step processes. Thank you for watching, and I just wanted to remind you guys a couple of keys for success. Uh, number one, you got to do the practice questions. If the things I'm saying make sense, that's phenomenal, but you still have to practice and make some mistakes on your own. Um, and that goes along with number two. If you get stuck, uh, ask me questions. Get in touch. Uh, write me an email. Make an appointment or leave a comment on the YouTube video. And uh, step number three to success is look after yourself. Eat good food, get some exercise every day, and socialize as much as you can right now. Um, I hope you guys are all doing well, and I will talk to you soon.